How do you interpolate to a digital elevation model in QGIS? Well, with the newest releases of QGIS, it's actually quite straightforward. You go to raster and analysis, and these are your interpolation methods. For example, inverse distance to a power, or in other words, inverse distance weighted, or nearest neighbor. These are just examples. Now, let's say now I want to do IDW. I click on the tool and I take my input layer. So I have a reprojected file, which is a hard to be a stuk datum projected onto all 27 of my relief points. So we'll keep that because it's projected into a planar projection. You can give the number of weightings or the power. So the default is 2. This is the same for arc map. So for consistency, we'll just keep it to that. Additional parameters that you'll have to put in are what you're actually interpolating on, so the height value or the contour height value, point value. Without that, you really will be interpolating a useless raster. Then you can also say what the output data type will be, float32, you can give it an integer value, anything you like. And here are your actual GDAL, your uh, the code if you would choose to actually just code it out. This tells me for example that I'm using my Z field as height. It's my elevation. I'm using the power of 2 for inverse distance weighted. I'm going to use uh, the output of float64 and it's going to be written to output tiff. Now of course you can change that name as well. You'll just have to give it a, a name in your input parameters when you write a file. At the moment it's, si it's saved for to a template file, but you can also save it to file using any of the formats that you really want. It will be a raster format, so an image format. And then all you do is you just simply run it. You wait for it to complete. And as you can see it's finished. And you see there it is, interpolated I D. W. The lowest values are indicated in dark colors, so those are the points that you see, and the higher values are indicated in lighter points, and if you actually switch the input contour points on and off, you can see that influence that the input points have on the output interpolated layer. But are there any other interpolation methods you can use? Of course there are. For example, you can use nearest neighbor. Again, you will use your reprojected file using you can you can add or change the default input parameters if you wish. Just leave them at default for now. You will have to of course specify your Z value. That is a requirement. Then you can also assign a profile for the color for the raster output. Again you can specify what the output data type will be, where it will be stored, and the code that goes with it. So let's call this one nearest neighbor. As you can see here, it actually changes the the code for the output changes. So if you run it and you wait for it to finish you can actually see how this looks. So here you can see it looks a little bit different to the IDW layer and if you switch the one on and off you can see that the output definitely looks different to the original or the IDW layer. Another thing that can be seen is that the IDW is a float value so it's got decimal points. The nearest neighbor is an integer value it ranges from 936 to 1816 and the IDW ranges from 940 to 1799 basically. But this illustrates how you can interpolate to a raster surface using input, input elevation points and also how the various interpolation methods don't necessarily coincide although the overall terrain characteristics are retained in the various interpolation methods.